police aren't following anymore. We should be safe for a bit. Great. The gathering was a close call. If we hadn't had a lookout, we would have been arrested. Definitely. Let's stay here for tonight and see how things look in the morning. All right. Hey, I know of a little hut up here. We can stay there for the night? Sounds good. Let's go. Great. I got more firewood. Should be enough. Brother Sung, I heard you had been arrested for sharing the gospel, and you were tortured for nine days and nights. It's true. Please, talk about what that was like. One day, in March 2008, I was gathering with Brother Lu and three sisters. Suddenly, we heard fast knocking on the door. Then a dozen or so officers burst inside. Before we could react, one of them shouted, Don't move! Against the wall! Two of them came and took the belts off me and Brother Liu. They tied our hands and pushed us against the wall. The others went room to room, searching everywhere. Before long, they turned the place completely upside down, even looking under mattresses. They ended up with a box full of books of God's words. I was really nervous and my heart was pounding. I had no idea what kind of torture they had in store for us. So I prayed to God. God, please give me faith and courage and watch over me so I can stand witness. Amen. I felt a little calmer after praying. They took us to the National Security Brigade where a head officer ordered me to stand against the wall and asked me really sharply, What's your name? What's your duty? Who's the church leader? I didn't make a sound, so he smacked me across the face. My ears started ringing and my face stung with pain. Pacing with his arms behind his back, he said, You're a church deacon. You think we don't know? We've been following you for six months. You'd better be straight with us, or we won't go easy on you. Then they took me to an office on the fourth floor, where I saw Brother Lou, handcuffed, squatting on the floor. The police put us back to back, with our hands side by side, and handcuffed us together, then made us stand in a squat. Could you even hold a squat cuffed like that? They were working hard to torment you. Yeah. Our legs started shaking and we swayed back and forth. The more we moved, the tighter the cuffs got. They dug really painfully into our skin. My legs were giving out after about 20 minutes. I was covered with sweat. Brother Lou nearly fell over. An officer came over, kicked him really hard and ordered us to squat down. It was worse this time around. With our backs pressed against each other, we didn't dare move our hands. I felt like I needed to gasp for air, and my hands and feet became numb. Our strength was completely gone after half an hour, and we collapsed onto the floor. We took the chance to grab each other's hand and give a squeeze of encouragement. Mm. More than an hour passed. They separated us and took me into an office across the hall. They handcuffed me to the arm of a chair, then went off to sleep. I couldn't sleep at all that night. I just kept thinking. The CCP hates believers more than anything. They torture or even beat us to death after they catch us. They already knew I was a church deacon and not from the area, so I had no idea what they would do to me, or if I'd be able to get through it. These thoughts made me afraid, so I silently prayed to God. God, please guide me. Give me faith and resolve to withstand suffering, to overcome the officer's torture. Amen. Then I remembered this from God's words. Do not fear this and that. You can stay steady before me, whatever struggles you face, without hindrances, so my will can be done freely. This is your duty. 
Amen. You must endure all. Be ready to relinquish everything. Give and expend your all to follow me. Now is the time I shall test you. Will you offer your loyalty? Can you loyally follow me till the end? Amen. God's words gave me faith and strength. Everything is in God's hands. And the Communist Party is just one tool for his service. This arrest and persecution was God's trial, God's test of me, to see if I had true faith. I said a prayer in my heart. O oh God, no matter how much I suffer, I'll never be a Judas, never betray you. Amen. They kept me handcuffed there from ten or so that night to two the next afternoon. Then an officer cuffed my hands behind my back and led me downstairs, cursing the whole time. We got to a courtyard, and he gave me a rough push from behind, staggering me six feet ahead. I fell hard onto the pavement and rolled. My arms were hurting really badly from the fall. He hauled me back up and kept walking, grumbling. I'll show you a good time today. He kept kneeing me really hard in the thigh, which hurt so much I couldn't walk straight. They took me to the administrative building of a detention house for questioning, where I saw a few sets of finger-width iron chains on the floor, a couple of thick ropes, and also an iron bar. There were five or six officers staring at me, and I realized they were going to torture me for a confession. I had this rush of panic and quickly said a prayer to God. God, I cannot stay strong through this on my own. Please stay by me and provide me with faith and strength. I felt much more composed after my prayer. After a bit, Officer Liu with the Provincial Public Security Department came, looked me up and down, and then ordered the other officers. You guys pair off into three groups. Each takes an eight-hour interrogation shift. Do not let him sleep. They wanted to break you by taking turns bombarding you. Get you to sell out the church while in a state of confusion. That's disgusting. It is. Officer Lu sat me down in a metal chair after he'd said that. Handcuffed my wrists to the arms and then shackled my ankles. He started questioning me. How many of you are there sharing the gospel? Who's organized you into a group? How do you maintain contact? Who's the leader? I said, I don't know. Two officers rushed up and started pummeling me with their fists on the head and back of the neck. Only stopping when they got tired. They have no regard for human life. They don't. They continued the interrogation after that. I was tired because I hadn't slept for a full day and night, but they'd shout the moment my eyes closed, or they'd bang the heating pipes with a rod, or smack the table with their hands. They'd burst out laughing when they saw me, looking scared, and said, You won't talk, but still won't sleep? Don't even think about getting out alive if you don't speak. They then made me stand in a squat again. My hands and feet were still firmly secured to the chair, so I had to squat with it on my back. When I squatted down, the chair was resting on my bottom, and the cuffs got tighter. And before long, my hands and feet were numb, all four limbs were sore, and I couldn't stand steadily. Seeing me unsteady on my feet, an officer came and kicked me in the leg, sending me toppling along with the chair. Then he picked me up and made me keep squatting. Sometimes when I fell, the chair would fall on top of me. That happened quite a few times, leaving me utterly exhausted and every part of my body hurting. My wrists were swollen from the handcuffs, and I couldn't move my legs. I fell down and couldn't get back up. Then they finally let me stop. When I wanted to use the bathroom late that night, they just undid one of my handcuffs and made me carry the chair on my back. I had to undo my pants with just one hand. It was difficult. Two of them were standing at the bathroom entrance laughing at me, which was so humiliating. I was really angry. 
Those demons take joy in other people's pain. Yeah. On my third day, another high-ranking officer came for questioning. How many people have you converted? Whose homes have you been to? Is your leader's name Zhang Lin? While he barraged me with questions, I rushed to say a prayer, asking God to protect my heart and to keep me from Satan's tricks. Wonderful. When he didn't get the information he wanted, he said to his underlings, keep a close eye on him and don't let him sleep. We'll see how long he lasts. Later on, when they saw I couldn't stand the sleep deprivation any longer, one officer made me squat with the iron chair again, while another got a pot of freshly boiled water, filled up a paper cup, and put that on top of my head. My scalp was burning with so much pain. I instinctively flicked my head to get it off. They punched and kicked me, knocked me down, dragged me back up, made me carry the chair again, and put a cup on my head, and said, We'll beat you to death if you do that again. It burnt so much I couldn't handle it. My body jerked a bit, and the cup fell again. They beat me again, punching and kicking. They tormented me this way over and over. There were blisters on my scalp from the burns. Then they popped from even more scalding. The blister fluid ran down my forehead. That combined with the sweat was agonizing. They boiled pot after pot of water and just kept putting those cups on my head. They kept this up for two or three hours. Finally, weak and limp all over, I collapsed and couldn't get up. They got their cell phones out, taking photos and mocking me, saying, We're putting these photos online for all you religious people to see. Let's see if they dare to keep believing. They laughed wickedly. What monsters. They oppress believers, but what they actually hate is God. They want all to follow the CCP instead of God. That's their goal. It is. These words from God came to mind at the time. Forefathers of the ancient, beloved leaders, they all oppose God. Their meddling leaves all beneath heaven in darkness, chaos. Freedom of religious beliefs, the legitimate rights and interests of citizens, all tricks for covering up sin. Now is the time. Man has long since gathered all his strength. He has devoted all his efforts and paid every price for this, to tear off the hideous face of this demon and allow those who have been blinded and tormented in every way to rise up from their pain and forsake this evil old devil. Amen. Amen. The CCP works madly against God and brutalizes believers. They're a pack of anti-God demons who despise the truth. Yes. The more they tortured me, the more clearly I saw their demonic essence. I rejected and cursed the CCP and wanted to stand witness for God, never betraying him or selling out brothers and sisters. Amen. Once I set this resolve, the weight of the chair on my back didn't feel heavy anymore. I heard one of the cops say, We can't take this anymore. This guy's not struggling with that chair. I silently praised God when I heard that. Oh God, you really are almighty. Without the guidance of your words, I could never withstand Satan's torture on my own. Thanks be to God. That truly was a miracle. Amen. By the fourth day, I'd been handcuffed and shackled for so long that my legs and feet felt totally numb. My hands and feet were black and blue, swollen up. The cuffs dug deep into my skin. I was so tired I couldn't force my eyes back open after they closed. They would smack the table and rattle the pipes to keep me from sleeping. And they would kick my legs. It was incredibly painful. Then, an officer who looked like he was in charge came in. He sized me up, undid my handcuffs and shackles, and ordered me to stand and jump. 
I hadn't eaten for several days, and they'd been torturing me nonstop, so I really didn't have any strength. I could barely stand up and had to support myself on the chair arms. And I fell after just a few jumps. They were laughing loudly off to the side. It went on like this for more than an hour, with me jumping and bawling. Then they handcuffed me back onto the chair and kept questioning me. One asked me, Whose homes have you visited? Where do they live? No need to go inside. Just point the places out. Just give us one location and we'll let you go. I said, I don't know. They asked over and over, but left in resignation when I refused to answer. They couldn't have given up so easily. No. Five days passed. I was depleted in body and mind. I couldn't keep my eyes from closing. The officers watching me kept smacking the table and banging pipes. But my head was so heavy I couldn't keep it up. One of them came over and pried my eyelids apart, while another squirted juice from orange peels into my eyes, yelling at me. You think you can sleep? You want some sleep? There was a piercing pain in my eyes right away, and tears started streaming down my face. I tried to put my head back, struggling desperately, but they held it firmly in place and kept squirting me in the eyes with the orange peel juice. I was dying to rub my eyes, but my hands were firmly handcuffed to the chair and I couldn't move them. It was horrible. My eyes hurt so much I felt like I was going to go blind. The officers were ordering me to open my eyes, but I simply couldn't. I called out to God. Oh God, I really can't take this torture anymore. Please guide me. Amen. I don't know how long it took, but I finally forced my eyes open. Then they carried a special chair made with a steel plate into the room. That plate was more than a quarter of an inch thick, and it weighed about 70 pounds. It had metal rings for hands and feet. They put me on the chair, and then cuffed my hands and feet to it. I was wearing a thin cotton shirt and a pair of thin thermal pants, so sitting on the metal chair was really cold. I couldn't stop worrying. Afraid that if I had to stay on that steel chair, I'd end up paralyzed from a lack of circulation. And without letting me sleep day or night, they might torture me to death if that went on. So I said a prayer. God, please give me faith and strength, so I may overcome this torment and stand witness. Amen. I remembered God's words after my prayer. When people are ready to sacrifice their lives, everything becomes trifling, and no one can get the better of them. What could be more important than life? Thus, Satan becomes incapable of doing any more in people. There is nothing it can do with man. Amen. Then I understood that I was nervous. Because I feared death, because I treasured my life, and Satan was exploiting this weakness to get me to betray God. I couldn't let its nasty trick succeed. My life was in God's hands, so whether I ended up paralyzed or they tortured me to death, it was all in God's hands. I was ready to submit to God's arrangements. I wouldn't give in to Satan, even if it meant death. Amen. I felt more faith from God's words and wasn't as terrified of death. I felt a burst of strength and sitting in that chair wasn't as uncomfortable anymore. By the afternoon of the sixth day, I'd gone many days without any water. My lips were so dry the skin was flaking. They'd only given me food a few times, so I was losing my mind with hunger and feeling really weak. The blisters on my scalp where they'd burned me hadn't scabbed over, so my sweat stung a lot. That officer, Lou, came and, seeing I still hadn't said anything, walked in front of me and said enticingly, Just tell us about your church 
and you won't suffer anymore. Come on. Who is the leader? Where is the money kept? Just cooperate with us, and we'll get you a job as a cop. Then you'll have a good life for sure. Isn't that better than following God? He went on. There'll be a reward if you help us find the upper leader in your church. And we won't say you were the one to tell us. Who would know? That's despicable. When they didn't get what they wanted with torture, they tried to entice you to betray God. It's horrible. It is. Outraged, I didn't even acknowledge him. He saw I was unmoved, so he went on, feigning concern. If you don't think of yourself, think of your parents. They're getting old. Could they take it if they knew what was going on with you? Everything will be fine. If you talk to us, your family can live a good life. I could see this was one of their tricks. Sora responded severely, indignant. I don't know a thing. You can forget about getting anything out of me. In a rage, he grabbed the water bottle and hit me all over my face and head. I got dizzy. My eyes blurred and my face went numb while my ears were ringing. I don't know how long that went on. Then he said angrily, We're bringing your parents in tomorrow. I retorted, Even so, I'm not talking. You can beat me to death. I'll never betray God. Amen. He yelled back, You're a lost cause. Hopeless, a religious nut. I was so grateful to God when I saw that devil humiliated in his failure. Thanks be to God. Mm. On the seventh day, they kept torturing me and keeping me awake. The non-stop torment had left me weak. I felt like the world was spinning and my vision was blurry. I was even hallucinating. And sometimes things I saw were overlapped or distorted. It felt like I was in a bunch of different places. In my days, someone twisted my ear and barked. Pretending you're dead? Talk, or you won't make it another day. Let your God save you. But all I could feel was pain, and I couldn't open my eyes. Then I lost consciousness. After who knows how long, I came to and discovered my clothing was completely soaked. I realized the police were splashing me with cold water to wake me up. On the ninth day, three of the officers who were watching me came down with a cold. An officer came up to me, listless, and said, We can't take it anymore. Just make something up and write it down, so we don't have to suffer along with you. I refused. They then wrote down some random names and addresses and stopped questioning me. Thanks be to God. Seeing Satan humiliated and defeated, I was so grateful to God. I'd been able to withstand all those days of torture entirely because of God's protection. His words were giving me faith and strength. Otherwise, I would have died long ago. Yeah. I experienced what God meant when he said, God is never absent from the heart of man and he lives among man at all times. He has been the driving force of man's living, the root of man's existence, and a rich deposit for man's existence after birth. He causes man to be reborn and enables him to tenaciously live in his every role. Thanks to his power and his inextinguishable life force, man has lived for generation after generation throughout which the power of God's life has been the mainstay of man's existence. And God has paid a price that no ordinary man has paid. God's life force can prevail over any power. Moreover, it exceeds any power. His life is eternal. His power, extraordinary. And his life force cannot be overwhelmed by any created being or enemy force. Thanks be to God. It's amazing you could get through nine days and nights of that. Oh, thank God. It was the guidance of God's words. Amen. 
<sighs> they sentenced you to hard labor after that? They did. In October, the party gave me a year of labor for using a Zhe Zhao to disrupt social order and cross-provincial dissemination. After my release, I found my family had been working connections and spent over $3,000 to get me out early. Otherwise, I'd have been there even longer. I saw from being arrested and persecuted by the Communist Party that it is an enemy of God. It madly fights God, persecutes believers, a reincarnation of evil spirits and demons. It is. I came to hate it and completely break ties with it. Amen. At the same time, I could feel God's love. While I was tortured, it was God's words that gave me faith and strength and got me through Satan's horrible persecution. It was a true experience of the authority and might of God's words and made my faith in God stronger. Thank God. Gaining all of this through the persecution you suffered really is invaluable. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.